The Indonesian government constantly reforms the education system from the, the Swiss education system is Did you know that schools uniform are imperative in Indonesia? And so what about compulsory education in Switzerland? And the cost for compulsory education are borne by The question is who are eligible to study at what kind of universities and faculties. And certain entrance exams may apply for those who wish to study medicine. With regard to the level of literacy in Indonesia, Jakarta Post, a national English newspaper, reported in 2016 that people from the age of 15, but the only thing that I commonly see in Indonesia is that they still don't sufficiently comprehend what they are reading. Literacy in, in, in Switzerland is 100%. And what about the religions in Switzerland? How many religions? Why Javanese language is very popular? And now what is the national language in Switzerland? Hi, hello, welcome back to my channel and thanks a lot for subscribing to my YouTube channel. If you are new here and haven't subscribed yet, then please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon too. Alright, and this is the second video or part two presenting the differences between Indonesia and Switzerland. And if you missed the first video or part one, then please click up here to watch it. Either way, you can find out the link in the description below. Alright, and these are the remaining categories that make Indonesia and Switzerland distinct, such as compulsory education, university, literacy, literate ranking, religions, and languages. So let's get started by familiarizing ourselves with the definitions of compulsory education. According to the UNESCO, compulsory education is defined as number of years or number of age spent during which children are legally obliged to attend school. So it is a mandatory for the parents to send their children to school for some years. And by the way, do you think that this compulsory education is important and why? Well, I personally think that this compulsory education is essential because it's a basic foundation that will allow children to become independent individuals. And politically, one of the goals of designing this education system for the government is nothing else but to reduce the number of illiterate citizens. And providing a good quality of education can lead the citizens to create more innovations and so the competitiveness level of the country is to improve at a better level than before. Am I making sense, guys? Let me know what you think by commenting on this video. And when it comes to the education system, both Indonesia and Switzerland are unique. I'm going to show you how this education system works in respective countries. But before pursuing, I'd like to remind you to click subscribe and press the bell icon too, so that you won't miss the next video. And it gives me more motivations when I see more subscribers in my channel. All right, frankly speaking, the Indonesian government constantly reforms the education system from the first president, Sukarno, to the current president, Joko Widodo. And today, Indonesia has a better education system as compared to the earlier times. For instance, in 1950, the Indonesian government at that time tried to implement the compulsory education which lasted for six years for about 33 years. And by the year of 1984, the government officially launched the compulsory education. And this equals to primary school or elementary school today. And one decade later, which was in 1994, the government reformed uh, the length of the compulsory education from six years to nine years. And this allowed the Indonesian citizens to study up to lower secondary school or junior high school. And since 2015 to date, the Indonesian government has revamped the duration of compulsory education from 9 years to 12 years. This means that the Indonesian citizens can gain better knowledge because they can attend the school up to upper secondary level or senior high school. Children in Indonesia begin their compulsory education at the age of 6 or 7 and they complete their obligatory school at the age of 17 or 18. And children attend 
the primary school when they are at the age of 6 or 7 and 12. And those who study at the lower secondary school are at the age of 12 or 13 and 15. Afterwards, they continue to the upper secondary school or senior high school or vocational school at the age of 15 or 16. And by the age of 18, they will complete their secondary or their upper secondary school and earn a diploma. With this senior high diploma, they can use it either for obtaining or finding a job in the manufacturing industry or other industries for instance or pursuing their studies to university. Furthermore, the compulsory education in Indonesia is not a must thing to do. Instead, it's an option. So if the parents wish their children to have or to gain better knowledge of general or specific uh, subject at schools or if the parents wish their children to have better life in the future then they would send their children to take or to join in the compulsory education. By the way, did you know that schools uniform are imperative in Indonesia? Well, you better know this because the parents are required to purchase the school's uniform from the institutions where they send their children to study just before the academic year takes place. And these students will have several uh, uniforms to wear at certain days. For example, students will have three different uniforms to wear from Monday to Friday. I'm talking about the public schools. And in addition to that, students will have also or have uh, the sport uniforms uh, and they will wear when they are practicing sports at schools. Public and private schools are authorized to determine which uniforms to wear at what days. And recently, the parents have to respect and obey the regulations whereby it says that they can only send their children to school that are nearby their residence. And so, what about compulsory education in Switzerland? Well, compulsory education in Switzerland is unique. The system is designed to guide the students to excel their competences right after completing their compulsory education. Adding to that, the systems of compulsory education differ from one to another cantons and municipalities. About the duration alone, compulsory education in Switzerland lasts for 11 years. It starts from primary school or elementary school to lower secondary school or junior high school. And bearing in mind that the elementary school in Switzerland includes the kindergarten that lasts for two years. Children start their kindergarten when they are at the age of four. Students in Switzerland don't go into the same classes when they are in the lower secondary school or right after the completions of their primary school. They are put into separated classes or joint classes according to their grades. And sort of recommendation from their teachers play an important role for the student who is to improve their performance. For example, students with average grades lower than 5 out of 6 would be advised to excel their potential and talents in other subjects. Conversely, students who have obtained above average grades 5 out of 6 would also be recommended to excel their academic performance based on their interest in, uh, in particular subjects such as natural science. And if the pupil who obtain just below average grade would also be somehow uh, receiving a recommendation letter from their teachers under some circumstances. And these pupils must work harder than before in order to catch up with you know particular courses which they left behind uh, so that they can be put into the same class as other students who obtain above average grade. Once students completed their compulsory education, they will not be obliged to pursue their studies to upper secondary school. In other words, the upper secondary school is an option. Nevertheless, based on the article that I've studied, it said that more than 90% of Swiss citizens completed their upper secondary school or senior high school. And did you know that Swiss education system distinguishes between its upper secondary school? Well, you know that 
senior high school in Switzerland are segregated from one to another type of upper secondary school depending on the uh, uh, pupils grades and competences. Some people pursue their studies to general or common senior high school and obtain specialized baccalaureate and other people pursue their studies to vocational education and training or VET that um, allow them to receive a federal vocational baccalaureate upon completion and this VET is called dual track system that permits students to do uh, their apprenticeship and attend their school once or twice per week. Oh, by the way, did you know that compulsory education in Switzerland is free? Well, it is indeed free of charge and the costs for compulsory education are borne by cantons and municipalities where students and parents reside. And about 90% of public expenditure is mainly uh, allocated to finance these compulsory education. And about the uniforms, students in Switzerland don't have or don't wear the uniforms like you guys see in Indonesia. After talking about compulsory education from the primary school to the upper secondary school, I'm now going to tell you about the tertiary school. Or let me just name it university. The question is who are eligible to study at what kind of universities and faculties. Generally speaking, people can study at universities and opt for faculties they are interested in as long as they have sufficient capacities or competencies required by the universities. In Indonesia, most people want to pursue their study to the state's universities right after completing their senior high schools. Nonetheless, before entering university, they have to get a seat and pass the entrance exam. Of course, there is always an exception to enter university without passing the entrance exams. But these exceptions only for those who are excellent in their academic performance or for some reasons. Well, based on the research conducted by CEIC in 2018, there were about 9.6 million students at the upper secondary schools in Indonesia. So can we imagine if 50% of those students wish to continue to study at the state universities? That would be wow, isn't it? But let's find out the reality. So statistically speaking, in 2019, Statista remarked that there were about 2.93 million students who enrolled at the uh, state university across 34 provinces in Indonesia. And in the previous year, a national newspaper called Republika reported that there were about 7.5 million students that studied at universities without mentioning whether those students study at the state universities or private universities. And in the same year, which was in 2018, the word education news and reviews studied the overall percentage of Indonesians who study at universities increased by 36.3% as compared to the previous academic year which was 20%. Well, I give you the link in the description below if you want to read more about it, okay? Now, what about the tertiary education in Switzerland? Would you be able to guess how many students enroll in the state universities? Well, it's gonna be too difficult for you to determine if you don't do a research. But let me tell you again that the Swiss education system is unique. So those who have accomplished their upper secondary schools with the specialized baccalaureate are eligible to study directly to all universities, federal institutes, and universities of applied sciences without passing the entrance exams. And those who hold the federal vocational education baccalaureate, I mean, can pursue their study to the universities of applied sciences. And certain entrance exams may apply for those who wish to study medicine even if they got the specialized baccalaureate. Based on the federal statistical office, there were about 260,000 students that enrolled in the universities for the academic year of 2018 and 2019. This amount of students increased by 25% as compared to the previous years. I'll give you the link in the description below if you want to read more about it. Now let me tell you about the literacy. With regard to the level of literacy in Indonesia, Jakarta Post, a national English newspaper, reported in 2016 that people from the age of 15 who can read and write 
are about 96%. This means that there are still 4% of the total populations who are illiterate. And this is a huge homework for the government of Indonesia. But I'm sure that the percentage of populations who can read and write now increase because it is now already uh, 2020. But still, if you don't, if you want to uh, know more about it, you can do uh, research by yourself, right? And literacy in in, in Switzerland is 100%, meaning that there is no issue for the citizens um, to write and to read. All right. Now let's get ourselves informed about the literate ranking. This literate ranking represents the level of literacy among countries in the world. So I believe that there are many factors that trigger people to be interested in reading books, journal, articles, newspaper, magazines, and so on. And one of the factors is that it could be the economic welfare of the individual or the country alone. Another factor could be the willingness of each individual. So it wouldn't be surprising to see you know, a large gap in the literate ranking between countries. A national English newspaper, Jakarta Post, in 2016 reported that Indonesia's literate ranking remained low at 60 out of 61 countries. So what does this mean to us? Well, this means that most Indonesians are still lazy to read and write. However, this doesn't mean that most Indonesians are illiterate. You know that 96% of total populations from the age of 15 are literate. But the only thing that I commonly see in Indonesia is that they still don't sufficiently comprehend what they are reading. So guys, correct me if I'm wrong by commenting on this video, okay? So what about the literate ranking in Switzerland? Well, Swiss literate ranking is at 6 out of 61 countries. You see that there is a huge gap between Indonesia and Switzerland. So the factor that I said before was that it could be the economic welfare of individual and the country alone. Because the richer the individual or the richer the country will affect the quality of education and also it motivates the citizens to read. Now what we can learn from this difference on one hand is that Literate behavior can help making successful individuals in the sense of knowledge-based economics and making this world as the best and peaceful place to live. And on the other hand, people who don't have literate behavior are easily swindled, undernourished in mind, body and soul that drive them to become brutal, fascist toward the others, and this will cause no peaceful life in the future. Now let's have a look at the religions. You know that following one of the religions in Indonesia is very important. But did you know how many religions in Indonesia? Well, there are six religions in Indonesia. The first is Islam. The second is Catholicism. The third is Protestantism. The fourth is Hinduism. And the fifth, Buddhism. And the last one is Confucianism. And these religions are very, very important to some extent because each religion that the citizen follow will be printed out on their ID cards. So you might think that this is weird or normal stuff. You guys decide. And what about the religions in Switzerland? How many religions that are available in Switzerland or recognized in Switzerland? There are four religions in Switzerland. The first is Catholicism, the second is Protestantism, the third is Judaism, and the fourth one is Islam. And this religion is also to some extent important, but the government doesn't require this religion that the citizens follow to be printed out on their ID cards. So what I learned in here is that the Swiss citizens don't like to exhibit their religions. To me, I personally think that uh, it is a, a kind of or a sort of private business between God and themselves. Speaking of the language is very interesting. In my first video or part one, I mentioned that Indonesia is an island nation. It's because it has more than 17,000 islands and the country has 300 ethnic groups that speak hundreds different languages. World Atlas 2017 marked that there are about 700 languages used for daily communication and the very popular language is 
Javanese language comprising East Java and Central Java. And another popular language is Sundanese, which is spoken language in West Java. By the way, did you know why Javanese language is very popular? Well, it's because there are more than 100 million of people live in Java and they speak Javanese and Sundanese. Furthermore, the other popular languages are Minangkabau and Muzi. These languages are spoken in the island of Sumatra. But hey, you know what? None of these languages is regarded as official or national language. That makes us united in diversity. So Indonesia has one official or national language called Bahasa Indonesia and it is used for formal communications such as in print and online media, businesses and education. And now what is the national language in Switzerland? Is it English? Well, the language or the national language in Switzerland is not English. Have a look at this one. So there are four national languages in Switzerland. As you can see here in this graph, that there are German, French, Italian, and Romans. The most popular one is German or dialect Swiss German, contributing to 62.2% of spoken language in the country. And then followed by French at 22.9%, then Italian with its dialect Italo Grison at 8%, and then 0.5% of people in Switzerland that mainly speak Romans. So based on the research finding from World Atlas 2018, it showed that the percentage of permanent residents in Switzerland uses friends for daily communication is increasing from 18% to 22% during the period of 1970 and 2018. So guys, what do you think of these differences? Do you value the difference? Well, I hope that you like this video part 2 and if so, don't hesitate to give you thumbs up and by the way, comments, feedback are highly appreciated and feel free to write down in the comment sections. And thanks a lot for watching this video. Again, don't forget to click subscribe button and press the bell icon too so that you'll be notified once the third part or part 3 is uploaded. And again, take care, stay safe and see you in the next video. And by the way, have a look at these categories for part 3, okay?